Hi, welcome. And today we'll be going over our Mexico toys data. In the previous um, video, we had uploaded and modeled it. <clears throat> so we're going to go to Power Query and take a look at our data. So let's click this. So right now we're in Power Query and the data is clean, but I just want to let you see how it would be if the data is needs cleaning, what you have to do. So let's just check for duplicates. So I'm just going to press um, Control and click to highlight these column heads, go to Reduce Rules, Remove Rules, and Remove Duplicates. So this will remove any it would have removed any duplicates but from here we can see that everything is 100 we don't have errors or empty um, spaces in our data so we're just going to go back to our power bi canvas and it will apply any changes so we are going to be creating some columns and some measures to help us um, graph our visualizations. So the first thing we'll be looking at is we would like to get the cost and sales and profit and all that. So let's go to our data window and go to sales. So we have the units of each product. Now this is the unit sold because we're in the sales table. So I would like to know how much each unit cost and how much each unit was sold at, because we don't have this here. We don't have the cost price or the selling price on this table, but we have that information in the product table. We have the product cost and the product price. So we have to merge this table and we're going to do that using the related function. So let's go back to our sales table and we're going to create a new column. create a new column and we'll name it gross sales, gross cost. So gross cost will be units, that's the units from the sales times, we're going to get use that related function to get the product price or the product cost. Press enter and we get the gross cost. Next, we're going to get the, the, okay, so I shouldn't name this gross cost. I should just name it unit costs. Let me go back so I can rename this, rename, not gross cost, but unit cost ahead of myself. I'll do it here. Um, hmm, what's wrong with my typing? Unit cost. Okay, so a new column, this will be the unit price. And do the same thing, units times related. This is a function, but the function will bring in the product price. Uh, bring in the product price. Okay, press enter and we have our product price. Um, 
So let's see what this means. Go to our canvas. So right now we can get a measure where we'll get the net cost. We'll get the net profit by getting the um, gross cost and gross sales. That will give us the gross profit. And all this will be in a measure too. So I like all my measures being in one table. So I'm going to create a table, name it measure. Load. Um, let's wait for it a bit and create a new measure. This new measure is going to be our gross cost. So we're just summing all the costs of this data. So gross cost equals to sum, sum of sales or yeah, sales of the unit cost. Press enter. So we can see our gross cost here. Let's put this in a card and visualize this. Next, we have, we're going to create gross sales. That is how much we sold the selling price now. New measure. Sales unit price. Press enter. So to visualize this, I can just, since I want to use another card, I can just come control C, control V, that's copy and paste, copy it. That's another way of duplicating it. And I will click here, the gross sales, drag it to this field. We now have our gross sales shown here in this card. So the next is to get the gross profit. I can delete this column one. It doesn't serve any purpose. When I created this measures table, every table should have at least a column. So a column was just automatically be created. So the column can be deleted, delete from model. Yes. So I can create my, a new measure for the gross profits. I'll name it gross profits equals to, that'll be the gross sales, gross sales minus gross cost. Press enter. Control C, Control V and drag. That didn't work. Control C, Control V, drag. Remove it from the fields here and click your gross profits. That should take it to this field. We'll just drag it. So we'll have a gross profit of four million. Now I want to find out the average sales transaction or average sales, average transaction value. That means on average, what is the um price that a customer pays when it comes to your store? That's how much the customer spends, sorry, when the customer comes to your store. Now, we achieve, we'll achieve this by your sales 
divided by the number of customers and the number of customers can be gotten from the sales ID. The sales ID will give us the unique count of customers. So the sales ID will give us the unique count of customers. So what am I doing here? We would go to our measures. Okay, sorry, just let me drag this back. Okay, so new measure. Um we want to count the number of customers so or the number of transactions. So let's name it transaction count. Transaction count equals to um, distinct counts, distinct counts, no blanks of this sales ID. Let's enter. Let me just take a look at what that number is. Uh, it's the wrong card. Okay, so this is the transaction counts. Now this transaction counts is for two years. So to get the average transaction value for sales will be okay. For, so for that would be. Um, Let's, let's put it in a new measure. Average, average transaction value will be equals to your sales, your gross sales. Divided by your transaction count. So. so on average, they spend seventeen dollars when on each transaction as just on average. One vital indice is the number of stores because we're going to use it for lots of our visualization. So another new measure and we'll just count the stores. So I'll name this as store, store counts equals to distinct counts of the store store ID. And what do we have there? Are 50 stores. So let's start pl plotting some visualizations. I'm just going to reduce this so that we create space. OK. 
Yeah, this for now. So my first visualization is the sales by month. And for that, we're just going to drag and drop. So after you've done all this, visualizations become a lot easier if, if you've done your measures and your columns properly. All you'll be doing from now on is just a lot of drag and drop. So we'll set the stage for that. So I'm going to use this tab column chart. To click on it, I'll just increase this so that it will get to see what I'm doing. And I want to know the sales by store location. So we'll just go to the stores table. The store location should be on the y axis. Sorry, store location should be on the X axis. And since I want to know the sales, I will just click on this gross sales measure. That should be on the Y axis. So we can see downtown. I hope you can see it. Let me increase it. Downtown commercial, residential, airports. Downtown has the most sales by store location. So I'll reduce this. Next, we should know the sales by, okay, I said the sales by, by month. So let me use another stats column chart. Sales by month, sales by month. So the sales is also going to be on the y axis and the month. The month is on the sales table because that's where we have our date column. So I'm just going to Click on months, want to be on the X axis. I also want, okay, for the months actually, it's best, we can do it like this, but I think it get, it gives a better visualization if we use a time, a line chart. So I will instead click on a line chart and you would get to see why I prefer this when I filter my visualization. Sorry, sorry. So I'll click outside of my visualization and have a slicer. Now this slicer is going to filter between 2017 and 2018 years. So I want it to be a list and I'll take this here, use my zoom, reduce this. So 2017, you can see it changes my visualization for everything for all the indices and see everything changes and the graph changes. Okay, then for 2018, you can see everything changes. So it's better you use a line chart as opposed to a, a um, bar chart. So let's, let's keep it moving. Um, so one key indices is we can find out the store that makes the most profits because we've seen the store by sales. So we can see the store by profits because there are some stores that make more profits than others. And we can see stores by distribution. 
two. So let's start with store by profits. Let's see the store location that gives us the most profits so that we know where to put our, to cite our stores and other things like that. Mm. Let's see, stores by profits, stores by profits. So we are going to use, let's use, yeah, let's use another bar chart. It doesn't matter how many bar charts you use. It's just best to get something that gives you a good and understandable visualization. Go by the store location. And profits, gross profits. So downtown still gives us the most profits, but we can also look at the average profits. Yeah, we can look at the average profits by store location. Average profits by store location. Store location and average profit. So in this instance, more custom customers pay slightly more in airports locations, followed by commercial locations. Yeah, airports, yeah, commercial locations, then downtown. We can also look at the spread of these stores. So for this, I'm going to use another. I know this is getting crowded, but we would work on. We'll work on our formatting of the visualizations in the next. In the next video, right now, let's just place everything in our canvas. So the spread of the store location. Store location and store count. Okay, and you can see this. So you can see that downtown has more stores. So that's is responsible for the high pro sales and high gross profits. It has more stores, it has 29 stores, then 12 and all this. So when you sum this up, you should get these 50 stores. Also, you can see that yes, downtown has more store stores, but when it comes to the average value a customer pays, downtown is the least. So that shows that it, it has more stores, but not really a high value, not it doesn't have high valued customers. That's basically what all this shows. So I would end this video here because we basically looked at everything and I don't want this video to be very long. And I think it's already getting long. So we'll end this video here. And in the next video, we're going to clean format this and make it more appealing to the eyes. So thank you very much. I hope you were able to gain one or two things from this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.